Milk sales are the primary income generator for nearly all dairy producers. Predicted transmitting ability for milk, or PTAM, explains how much more or less milk a bull's daughters should produce than the average of their contemporary group. This data comes from herds on official DHI test and is calculated by CDCB. If a bull is plus 2,000 PTA milk, this means his daughters are expected to produce 2,000 pounds more milk than other animals in the same herd that are in the same lactation and that calved around the same time. For example, if your first lactation cows that calve in the spring average 25,000 pounds of milk over their lactation, then daughters of a bull that's plus 2,000 pounds of milk who also calve in the springtime will be expected to average 27,000 pounds of milk over their lactations. It's important to remember that using a 2,000 pound milk bull will not necessarily increase your entire herd average by 2,000 pounds. It simply means daughters of that specific bull will produce 2,000 pounds more milk than the average cow in your herd. Farms that ship milk for cheese, butter, ice cream, or other non-fluid dairy products get the biggest economic benefit from protein and fat selection. Predicted transmitting abilities for protein and fat are published by the Council on Dairy Cattle Breeding using data from all cows on official milk test. On a bull's proof, fat and protein are expressed in two forms, pounds of fat or protein and percent of fat or protein. Just like for milk, pounds of protein and fat tell how many more or less pounds of each component a bull's daughters are expected to produce over their first lactations when compared to herd mates of the same age and time of freshening. The percent of protein and fat tell us if a daughter's percentage of fat or protein will be higher or lower than herd mates. Let's compare the component percentages of two bulls. Bull A at 0.15% fat and 0.07% protein is much higher than Bull B at 0.05% fat and 0% protein. If you choose to emphasize component percentages in your genetic plan, you would likely choose Bull A to improve the fat and protein in your herd. But since fat and protein percent both have a strong negative correlation with pounds of milk, these bulls are actually identical for the total pounds of fat and nearly identical for the pounds of protein their daughters are expected to produce as compared to herd mates. If you are like most dairy producers and paid on total pounds of components as opposed to the percentage of fat or protein, then you'd know the daughters of both bulls will offer similar economic gains through your future milk check. So, should you select for pounds of fat and protein or percentage of fat and protein? Let's take this example one step further. For simple math, let's say your average herd production on first lactation animals is 25,000 pounds of milk with a 3.2% protein and 3.5% fat. If you use bull A and bull B in your herd, then daughters of bull A will average 25,872 pounds of milk with a 3.27% protein and 3.65% fat. Daughters of bull B would average more milk at 26,650 pounds with a smaller component percentage at 3.2 protein and 3.55 fat. If we do the math to figure out total pounds of components that these daughters would produce, we learn that daughters of bull A will produce 846 total pounds of protein and 944 pounds of fat, while bull B's daughters would produce 852 pounds of protein and 946 pounds of fat. So even though bull A far exceeds bull B for percentages of fat and protein, Bull B's daughters actually produce more total pounds of components since they also produce more total milk. Keep this example in mind as you decide on your genetic plan. 
selection for pounds of fat and protein will make more of an economic impact than selection for percentage of fat and protein.